almost can't buy, although they could, of course, you can't, you know, buy enough to get yourself out of all of us talking about that mm. for six weeks because that was the estimate for this trial. And there's some and things you can't so, put a price tag on. Yeah, it's, it's deeply problematic with the amount of evidence, um, you know, that for a news organization, as you know, as they call themselves, to, to for the public to see that. But let's talk about, you know, what had this trial gone through? I mean, what were the stakes? How could the landscape have changed, or at least for that one corporation? And can I add something yeah. to that, too? The special master that we learned had just been appointed. Help us make sense of that in the context of, of Lilia's question as well. So the special master is actually a different track. So if we could put that to the side for a moment and talk about kind of the substance of the case, in some ways, it was going to be the biggest defamation case that we were going to see in decades. And that's because it was dealing with a news organization talking about a public figure. And we have the highest level, the highest threshold that you need in that circumstance to prove a defamation claim. You need to show actual malice. And here we are in a situation where we have texts and we have other evidence indicating that there was actual malice. So Oh, some people thought, well, this will change the legal landscape because we will impose liability on mm -hmm. a media corporation. And I would say, no, it actually would have just solidified the legal landscape because the law allows us to punish people for lies. You just have to show actual malice when you're talking about a public figure. So I don't know that it would have changed the law. Mm. Also, let's remember that the judge already took off the table the heart of Fox News's defense here, which was the First Amendment. They had two specific privileges, which we can go into in more detail if we want, but they had two specific claims with respect to the First Amendment. The judge said no at summary judgment, that they did not mm. prove the evidence that they needed to in order to bring forward those defenses. Now, the special master question, Lana, to your question, that's a different one dealing with whether or not Fox News basically breached its discovery obligations and they held evidence and they didn't hand that evidence over. The judge at the time said, you know, Fox, you have a credibility problem. So that's not based on defamation. It's based on whether or not they handed over evidence when they should have to Dominion. Okay, that's that's helpful to clarify. Uh, Jessica, do we expect or should we expect that this settlement um, and Fox deciding that going through this trial was more than they could bear, mm. that it might change the way that Fox uh, operates, Fox News that I don't, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I think what we're seeing with respect to the settlement is that some of these decisions are business judgments. And what we also know is that based on those particular texts that Fox was very worried about losing their viewership and losing their advertisers. And so if you look at the landscape that Fox is looking at, on the one hand, losing viewers, losing advertisers, on the other hand, paying for these settlements, I don't know which one costs them more. They do have a history, I believe, of another settlement where um, they basically, in some of our view, did not comply with a settlement. And so we all have to look to see, and this is what I'm so curious about, Will there be statements by Fox News hosts mm -hmm. that say, we're not going to talk about this again and we lied to you, um, or will that not be part of the settlement? Mm. So Very sight to interesting. See. Well, right now we are uh, hearing that congressional correspondent for CBS News, Scott McFarlane, is joining us uh, via phone. Scott was again in one of the most talked about courtrooms in America. In the room where it happened. In the room where it happened, as he was just a few weeks ago. Scott, walk us through it. Scott, do we have you? Well, well let's we'll, go back to yeah. Jessica because I think <laughs> I think maybe there's some uh, signal issues there, but we'll we'll get back to Scott in a minute. Uh, Jessica, we were talking just now about, you know, the significance of Fox News hosts of talent, the people that millions of Americans get their information from, what they believe are facts, coming out there and possibly saying, we lied to you. Uh, talk to us about just the kinds of conditions that are part of settlements of this nature. What makes you think that that would be part of this uh, agreement? And of course, we're speculating. Well, 
It, absolutely, of course we're speculating because I think part of what Dominion wanted and part of to our previous conversation about why didn't the settlement happen earlier, because my guess is that Dominion really wanted not just we will get this amount of money, but you Fox will not admit to any wrongdoing. I think they took this case, yes, of course, in part for the money, but I think they also really wanted to make a point. Now, this is not the only case pending against Fox News. There's also the Smartmatic case pending. But for, for Dominion, I think what they really wanted is to clear their name and to have Fox go on the record and say those things that we said about Dominion. And remember what they said. It was that they stole votes from Donald Trump, that they had some deal with the late president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, that they had a kickback scheme with certain politicians. I think Dominion really wanted Fox on record saying none of that was true. And those allegations were not just not newsworthy, they were false. Yeah. And that's my guess as to the settlement. Now we're talking about two private parties. They can basically agree to anything that doesn't violate um, that doesn't violate the law. Well, Jessica, we it sounds like we do have Scott back on the phone. Uh, Scott, tell us what happened in that uh, courtroom today. What did you see? Oh, great. We just lost Scott again. <laughs> this is breaking news, people. It's how it's done. Uh, all right. Back to you, Jessica, and sorry for jerking our viewers uh, around like this. Um, as we're as we're talking about the First Amendment and trying to make sense of this trial and the fact that there are other potential uh, defamation lawsuits against Fox News, um, what does this say that it's taking place right now before we're heading into the 2023 primary season? I think that's a great question. And it's actually, in a way, it's echoes of so much of what we've talked about in terms of big litigation, which is it's all mapped on top of the electoral calendar. Mm. And so my hope is that even though we were in some ways deprived of a trial, that part of the settlement is that Fox has to say, we lied to you. There was nothing to those 2020 claims that the election was stolen. Because to your question, I think that is something that's important for people to hear going into the primaries and going into the elections. One of the biggest existential threats facing our democracy is this explosion of misinformation and disinformation. And so if you think about the defamation case here, I made the argument that punishing Fox for this speech, far from harming the First Amendment, it actually helps to bolster mm -hmm. that marketplace of ideas that is a key part of the First Amendment and helps us to bolster our faith in elections. Because what Fox News hosts and guests said to viewers over and over again is you can't trust elections. And ultimately that leads us to a point where then maybe we just don't wanna engage in elections mm. and we check out of our representative democracy it's not good when that happens. We have, for instance, we have lawmakers who are elected by just a minority of people in their districts. We want lawmakers who are elected by a majority of people who are active and alert citizens. And so again, to the extent possible, if any part of the settlement can reach people in showing them that they could trust the election, that there were not voting machines that stole votes, it is increasingly important as we do march into our next round of voting. Yeah. Just uh, for context, for those of, of you who are joining us now, uh, we are covering breaking news that Fox News and Dominion have reached a settlement. Uh, this case we've been following for a very long time, and uh, it got to that point where jurors were actually inside the courtroom about to hear opening arguments as we learned that the two Private companies have reached a settlement over this lawsuit of, of defamation. Absolutely, a shocking surprise because uh, they ha there had been negotiations in the past. The trial had been delayed in the past, uh, but none of those negotiations had produced a settlement between Dominion, the maker of the voting machines that Fox News. Uh, falsely claimed we're trying to rig the election. What you're seeing right there are the attorneys leaving that courtroom. Judge Davis, as you said, says that the case has been resolved. The jury has been excused. Uh, the lawyer for Dominion thanked those juries, the jurors, rather, for their utmost professionalism. All of that coming really to naught as 
Millions had tuned in to see this more than a billion dollar defamation lawsuit that looked like it was going the way of, of Dominion voting systems based off of the judge's earlier rulings that basically uh, eradicated the First Amendment arguments Defense, that Fox yeah. News intended to make. We have with us Jessica Levinson. Uh, she is our legal contributor and our expert in all of these things. We also hope to bring back Scott McFarland, who's our congressional contributor contributor and was actually in the room, or our congressional correspondent rather, and was in the courtroom today. He, of course, yeah. with all this breaking news, is trying to sort things out, and we hope to get him back on the phone. But He's uh, busy as he was, you know, covering he's always, the, he's always the there. Trump arraignment. Um, but in the, in the meantime, Jessica, just a, a quick procedural question for you. Um, as I mentioned, there have been all of these negotiations that have happened. They haven't been fruitful up until this point. And then today, the attorneys uh, announced that they had a deal. Let's actually pause my question and listen, uh, perhaps, to what the attorneys have to say as, as they're gathered there outside of the courthouse. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to hearing a little bit more about what's in the settlement. Uh, of course, the amount that Dominion was seeking was $1.6 billion. Uh, at one, these are the Dominion attorneys, is what we're hearing. Uh, we're hopefully about to learn where they landed and what is part of this agreement. Justin uh, let's Nelson listen. from Sussman Godfrey, <laughs> proud counsel for Dominion Voting Systems. The truth matters. Lies have consequences. Over two years ago, a torrent of lies swept Dominion and election officials across America into an alternative universe of conspiracy theories causing grievous harm to Dominion and the country. Today's settlement of $787,500,000 represents vindication and accountability. Lies have consequences. The truth does not know red or blue. People across the political spectrum can even Our apologies, yeah, yeah, to our challenging there. connection there, it seems. But we were hearing from uh, Dominion Voting Systems attorneys talk about uh, the fact that they've reached a settlement uh, with Fox. It sounds like uh, $787 million. Just under a billion dollars. Right, less than the 1.6 that they were hoping for. But uh, interesting to hear them describe it as, uh, as, a, as a victory for the truth. Uh, the attorney there said the truth matters. Lies have consequences, accused Fox News of perpetuating a torrent of lies that led to an alternative universe of conspiracy theories. And not just the implications of, of what Dominion Voting Systems was accusing Fox News of doing are not exclusive to the United States, to the consequences, to a, to a democratic process that is healthy, to a democracy that survived, to an informed population, but also in other countries, because they were involving in these in these lies and these conspiracy theories, other governments uh, speculating about the effectiveness of these voting machines, which, you know, could be for this private company uh, used in elections around the world. And so not just injecting doubt into the American democratic system, but also beyond that in the world. Jessica, I want to bring you back in because I think we need to go a little bit back to the beginning. And we were talking about the high bar that exists for a defamation lawsuit to succeed. Those of us who have studied journalism and who went to, uh, to, to, stu to study media law understand that. But talk to us a little bit about what this lawsuit was about, why the high bar, and just what does the First Amendment play in all of these? Can a cable network get away with spreading lies? And perhaps, I don't know if I'm putting you a little bit here to the test, but the difference between a cable network, uh, and I don't want to take you back to the Telecommunications Act of you know, 1996, but, but broadcast, the difference between the responsibility that us news organizations have to the public and the significance that this lawsuit and this settlement might play into all of that. It, it's interesting that you said the responsibility of news organizations, because I think that's exactly right. 
On the other hand, we give news organizations for, I think, reasons that make all the sense in the world, a lot of latitude because we don't want you to be chilled into not reporting something and depriving me of information because you accidentally repeat a newsworthy allegation, but in fact, it is not true. Mm -hmm. And so that I think is to your broader question about you know, the First Amendment implications and First Amendment concerns here. And defamation, let's be clear, defamation allows us to punish people for what they say. And that's why we talk about the First Amendment when it comes to defamation, because what we're saying here, let's go down the elements, that there is a false statement. It's a false statement of fact, not pure opinion, that it's about the plaintiff. In this case, it's about dominion, that it causes dominion harm. And then here's the thing that really protects First Amendment interests, that it is made with actual malice if we're talking about a public figure. And that actual malice standard dates back to 1964 and a Supreme Court decision dealing with the New York Times where they basically said, okay, there's some speech that is so problematic that we can punish it, but only here's our safety valve, only if the people know it's false or entertain, quote, serious It looks like we've got the presser back up. Yeah, so we let's have the signal uh, back and healthy. Let's let's listen into the these conclusions from the attorneys. As I was preparing today to give the opening that we never got to, I never got to give. Uh, I was reminded of the hell that the Dominion employees went through and continue to go through to this day. Money is accountability. And we got that today from Fox. But we're not done yet. We've got some other people who have some accountability coming towards them. And I'm very proud of the team from Sussman Godfrey that has worked tirelessly for this case. And we'll move right on to the next one. Thank you. Did you get any retraction? Did you get any coming? Is there anything else in this settlement besides money? Davida Brooke, Sussman Godfrey, one last thank you, which is really to all of you for being with us on this journey. We appreciate what you've done to help us and to help expose what we were able to discover over the course of this process. And so thank you, and we'll see you at the next one. Councillors, anything else in this settlement besides money? Any retractions? Any retractions? That you expect an apology from That's all for now. Thank you. What you're hearing is reporters asking precisely the question that we were just discussing with Jessica Levinson, whether or not there is more than money that is part of this settlement, whether or not we're going to hear those figures who... There was plenty of evidence that was already out there showing that they knew they were lying when they were when they were propagating these conspiracy theories. Uh, the lawsuit didn't move forward. They settled. We don't know what else is in it. But Jessica, what else could be part of the settlement? And why wouldn't the attorneys want to address that question that is in all of our minds right now? I don't know. I wish I had an answer for you because seemingly they did agree on a settlement. It wasn't a tentative settlement because they had a jury waiting. They had a jury where they ordered lunch for the jury. The jury thought for two hours, we're about to go sit down for the first day of a six week trial that everybody for the rest of my life is going to want to interview me about. And so why they were so cagey, I mean, they clearly heard the question of, and was there anything else in the settlement? Um, and so at this point, we may not know until we hear something either from Fox or we mm -hmm. hear something from Fox hosts. Um, but it is fascinating to say the least that they, you know, aggressively dodged that question. Yeah. And in fact, said money is accountability right. as though it is uh, just the $787 million that that represented represents um, their admission of wrongdoing. Uh, Scott McFarlane, our congressional correspondent, who's there in, uh, in the courtroom, uh, reports that the Dominion CEO said that Fox has admitted telling lies, um, but whether or not that actually manifests in an on-air apology, yeah. in any of those hosts uh, what other conditions? owning uh, that we, we don't know and, and specifically do yeah. not know based off of that press conference. And um, speaking of owning, they also also mentioned that 
that there are others that now they're going to pursue, that there are other uh, lawsuits that this firm is, is repre representing Dominion Voting Systems on. Uh, I understand one of those is, is OWN, this other cable network. Uh, but Jessica, do you know a little bit more about who is next? Who is on that list that uh, Dominion attorneys are, are addressing or saying that they're going after? I think it is own, and I think you're right. It's based on essentially the same idea, which is that uh, Dominion was defamed because they were accused of throwing votes from Donald Trump to Joe Biden. And the settlement, in a lot of ways, I think puts the wind at their sails, where they are able to say, look, we just got Fox News to apparently admit to spreading lies, although I'm not sure that's a huge admission given that the judge had already concluded that these were lies and we know who said them. It was Fox News and Fox hosts. So it's interesting that you too. heard the, sorry? And their guests too. And excuse me, exactly, and their guests. And one of Fox's defenses was to try and say, well, no, that was just our guests. And uh, the judge didn't buy that really. Mm -hmm. And uh, so- There's plenty of opinion there. But there, oh, uh, you know, so Jessica, one thing that I'm just trying to understand, and, and we'll re, we're getting the Fox statement on this, uh, and we'll share that with our viewers in just a second. Does the judge have any say in the terms of the settlement, or is this something that is completely worked out by the two uh, the two entities, uh, Dominion and Fox News, and they can completely decide, and the judge really has no say except to say, all right. So, I mean, the judge will look and see, does the settlement violate the law or public policy? And barring that, then this is really up to the two parties. So this is not like, for instance, a plea deal in criminal court where the judge has to make sure that the defendant really understands what they're pleading to, that they've been informed of all of their rights. Obviously, we're not talking about taking away somebody's freedom here. We're talking about a private contract for the exchange of money. And so uh, a Jessica, judge is wrong in that. I, I apologize. I want to cut you off because we've lost Scott twice before. I know I want to make sure that we seem to have him on the phone. Uh, Scott, what is the latest? We understand that there is a statement from Fox News. Talk to us about what happened today in that courtroom. Well, the third time is the charm. Let's be clear. Here we are outside the courthouse in Wilmington. The attorneys for Dominion have just announced it was a $787 million settlement of a $1.6 billion defamation suit, nearly half the amount. They would not answer when I asked repeatedly if there's another component to this settlement besides the money. Is there a retraction or an apology or a written word from Fox? They wouldn't answer. So that question remains out there. But we can say that this didn't come as a shock after the 95-minute delay of resuming a trial after lunch break and after the judge had said he was going to be diligent about staying on time and remaining punctual and being efficient. So it was clear something was up. We saw heavy foot traffic of the attorneys from the courtroom to these two small meeting rooms next to the courtroom, back and forth, back and forth. It was, uh, almost, it was almost a capacity, <laughs> these small meeting rooms, as conversations were taking place. The attorneys walked in to the judge, did a brief off-microphone sidebar, then the judge announced the case is resolved. Both parties thanked the court for their time, and the judge thanked the jury for their service, saying they may have, if not certainly have, induced this res resolution to settlement. Uh, Scott, I don't know if you can hear us. Uh, I understand that there's a, there's a bit of difficulty, but we're hoping that you might be able to share Fox News's statement, if you could. We're awaiting a statement from Fox News. Pardon me if I'm, I'm behind dealing with the influx of, um, of statements. Fox News um, avoided the opportunity to speak to cameras as their attorneys walked out of the courthouse. So we expect a statement from Fox News if it hasn't come in the last few minutes. But they did not take the opportunity of a national press corps, an international press corps, inviting them over to the microphones <laughs> to speak after this resolution and settlement was announced by the judge. We do have one statement here from Fox News Media uh, after announcing that the settlement was reached and making the announcement that network said, we are pleased to have reached a settlement of our dispute with Dominion Voting Systems. We acknowledge the court's rulings, finding certain claims about Dominion to be false, certain. Mm -hmm. This settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards, 
We are hopeful that our decision to resolve this dispute with Dominion amicably instead of the acrimony of a divisive trial allows the country to move forward from these issues. Yeah, it does not sound based off of that statement uh, that Jessica's earlier thoughts that maybe we would hear Fox News uh, hosts say that we lied uh, or anything like that was actually part of the settlement yeah. uh, deal. Um, what are you hearing in this statement, Scott? What, what comes to mind? You've been covering this for a while. Well, <laughs> And this it was a spectacle, even without a trial. This captured international notoriety, and clearly there was some risk and leverage on both sides. Okay. As the opening statements were on the schedule for 1.30 Eastern time today, and then it was putting its feet in the hand of 12 jurors and 12 alternates, Fox News faced the prospect of its biggest stars and its boss testifying before an international press corps. So both sides carried risk and both sides carried leverage. Um, but if you're talking about what the actual last minute was, it wasn't the gavel banging at 9 a.m. Eastern when the judge concluded jury selection. It wasn't Monday when the judge postponed proceedings 24 hours. The final moments were just before opening statements were to begin at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. And that's when it appears there was a breakthrough in discussions that ended up just before um, 4 p.m ending with a settlement of this massive case for nearly half of what Dominion was seeking, $787.5 million out of a $1.6 billion lawsuit. Uh, I want to go back to Jessica Levinson now that we've gotten uh, that additional bit of insight and color from Scott. Um, and given that we've now read that, uh, that, that statement from Fox News on the settlement, um, it seems, Jessica, that, uh, that it sounds like there's a bit of, of their spin on it. We heard from Dominion, of course, that they said that money is accountability, that they're admitting that they lied. But from the statement from Fox, they, they uh, seem to walk away from that instead saying it re the settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards. How and they point that it's certain claims. I certain mean, they're, claims, they're right? They're, they, they're walking away from a, from a lot of a lot of this. Yeah. Um, how, what's your take on that? And how does this potentially help Dominion as they go after um, these additional claims? So uh, my takeaway here is that I don't think we're going to get apologies from Fox News hosts and Fox guests because Again, it's exactly what you just said. I think we really hear Fox kind of trying to move away from this. I think that would make sense in terms of why we just heard a few moments ago from Dominion and not Fox. I think it makes sense in terms of why Dominion's lawyers had deaf ears mm -hmm. when journalists screamed basically or yelled in a nice way, are there any other terms to the settlement? Because now I suspect the answer is probably no. And it's also why they said that the money is enough here, that the money indicates that there was fault. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, you know, what happens for Dominion next? This is a good settlement. I mean, you could see it on the faces of the attorneys. They're, I think they're happy with the outcome. Mm -hmm. And in terms of how much money they would have got if they would have won the case, that was where Dominion's case was weaker. Dominion had, I think, a very good case on liability and maybe not as good on damages. And so this, hmm. frankly, might be a very good outcome for Dominion. Now, they didn't have that moment where they have a verdict. But in terms of a client serving their, excuse me, in terms of a lawyer serving their client, I think Sussman Goffrey can feel like they really did a good job here. You know, yeah. in every in every settlement, of course, that's a story. The 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 com the person who's being sued, uh, the the they will say it's not an admission of guilt. The the plaintiff will say, look, it's an admission of guilt. I think the question here now is there are other uh, defendants in in this situation. It's going to be Own and potentially others that uh, that the this law firm as they already said, will pursue. Uh, these lawsuits are already out there. What does this settlement tell you about what should be in the mind of those executives at that other network and anybody else who already has a, a pending lawsuit? What's well, the and of course, the Smartmatic lawsuit against Fox as well, which and now at this point, it shows that Fox is willing to settle mm. and that they are willing to settle for large amounts. And now with respect to the other lawsuits um, by Dominion, I think it gives us a little bit of a roadmap as to where those lawsuits will go and the type of strategies that they will pursue and that they hope in those cases 
that they will be as, as successful, frankly, on summary judgment as they were here. Because let's remember this case, while it was slated for six weeks, there really was that only that one live issue of actual malice. And for Dominion, that's great news. And they're going to want to try and replicate that again in their other suits. Yes. And the standout quote for me, the truth matters, lies have consequences, coming <laughs> from the attorneys for Dominion. Jessica Levinson, Scott McFarlane, thank you for helping us uh, understand all of this breaking news. We will, of course, continue to monitor this story, and we'll have more of this at the top of the hour on Red and Blue. More news is next, including the latest on the detained Wall Street Journal reporter in Russia. You're streaming CBS News. Hey there, welcome to The Uplift. I thought she was a groom, and I stepped back and I went, oh, you're the queen. She's going to be with me every instant that I'm alive. I just wanted to see if you'd go to Disneyland with me today. I look over at him and he's smiling. I'm going to remember that the rest of my life. They told us when he was going to be born, he was only going to live for 30 minutes. It's really a miracle that he's with us today. The Uplift, stream now on the free CBS News app. Morning news matters because it sets the tone for your day and it's a way of getting you started. We're going to uplift you. We're going to send you out your way day to day. That first draft of history, it happens right here. CBS Mornings. An original documentary from CBS Reports. I always tell people that Twitter would not be Twitter without black Twitter. It's just us being in fellowship with each other. And it becomes a conversation you don't want to be left out of. People really started to recognize the power of activism on Twitter. Based on that one tweet, the hashtag Oscar so white was trending around the world. If anything has really powered black Twitter, it's been humor. If your food ain't right, oh, we gonna tell you about that too. So we tend to create change, create culture and cool. That's how movements happen on black Twitter and go beyond more than that. Black Twitter, the Twitterverse that changed a generation. Now streaming on the free CBS News app. You ready? A generation of kids opens up on CBS Reports. I just want to be like a regular kid. Their world, their struggles, their voices. What if I was white? A lot of people like to call names and make you feel ashamed for being proud of who you are. Now streaming gender. I did not realize that you could change your gender. Realizing how you feel. You can be a boy, and sometimes you feel like a girl, sometimes you feel like both. Redefining who you are. Identify as trans. Gender fluid. Non-binary and queer. Is the idea of gender a thing of the past? And to be yourself, always, no matter what anyone says, I love you. Are the kids all right? Gender, now streaming on the free CBS News app. Stories that inform. Or you can be really old at 60, and you can be really young at 85. Inspire. How do we unlock the power within ourselves to be who we want to be? And brighten your day. The best part of fame is making people feel good. Always send the people home happy. Make every day a little more like Sunday morning. Here comes the sun. Stream now on the free CBS News app. We go to stories because we can bring someone to that story. That human connection is incredibly important. The news doesn't have to be depressing. What do you love about running? Energy! Energy! It can be uplifting. Well, a Russian court has denied an appeal from American journalist Evan Gershkovich. The Wall Street Journal reporter was detained last month, accused of espionage. He could face up to 20 years in prison if he's convicted. Today's court appearance is the first time Gushkovich has been seen since his arrest. We're seeing him there. The U.S. Department says he's being wrongfully detained. William Pomerantz joins us now. He's the director of the uh, Kennan Institute at the Wilson Center 